Hey everybody, we've all seen it, some truck driver driving down the road in the middle of the night with his four-way flashers on because he knows he doesn't have any taillights on that trailer, but he's going to jerk that thing down the highway anyway. At least he's got his flashes on to warn everybody that he's a hazard out there. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to troubleshoot and fix 99% of the problems that you're going to find with your lights on your trailers so that you don't have to drive down the road in the middle of the night with your hazard lights on. So first, the tool list that you should be carrying on your truck with you. The most important tool and the first one that you're going to grab anytime you discover a problem with your lights is a light tester. This is my light tester that I carry in the glove box of my truck. You can get these at any automotive store, any truck stop, any hardware store, a thousand different places. They're five to 15 bucks, depending on how much you want to spend on them. Besides that, you'll want a roll of electric tape and a flathead screwdriver. If you're really motivated, get yourself a really small Phillips head screwdriver. And I'll tell you what that's for momentarily here toward the end of the video the last tool that you'll need to troubleshoot and fix problems with your lights is this image right here and I'm giving it away to every viewer of this video so tell your friends pause this video right here take a screenshot of this image right here because this is going to give you a heck of a lot of insight into your wiring problems all it does is show you which wires control which lights. We're going to go through that as we work our way through this video. Okay, so here's a clip of my back trailer, my second trailer. You can see my left turn signal is on. The problem with this clip is that I've got my four-way flashers on right there. My hazard switch is on, and that right side is not flashing. So I don't have four-way flashers, and I don't have a right turn signal on that back trailer. I need to find out what the problem is. Incidentally, the right side turn signal was not working on the front trailer either. So that's the problem that I'm addressing in this video. But the method is the same for any of your lights okay before we get too deep into how i found and fixed the problem with my right side turn signal i want to introduce you guys to a couple of concepts or really just one concept it's the concept of isolating the problem by finding the last known source of power to that particular light whatever light it is if, if you're right side turn signal is out or you don't have brake lights you don't have tail lights whatever it is find the last known power to that wire to the wire that controls that light okay so in general terms all of your power comes from your batteries down here below your your driver's side door under you know inside that step then it comes up, it, it'll go through a whole bunch of freaking rat's nest wiring crap up through your uh, fuse box. And you'll have two fuse boxes. Uh, every truck I know of has two fuse boxes, one under the hood and one uh, inside the cab at your clutch foot, your left foot. Uh, and, and then it just runs throughout the cab. 
uh, it'll come back here. All your trailer lights, those wires are going to come back here to a port where your green wire that you plug into the trailer, that first plugs into the truck, and then it then you plug it into the trailer, and then it runs all through the top and bottom of your trailer for your for your uh, clearance lights and your running lights down here below, and then everything in the back. So everything comes from that battery box. Okay, you got to isolate that. You've got if you've got problems back <clears throat> if you've got problems back here at the back of your trailer, then obviously the problem you've narrowed it down to somewhere within the next 75 feet, right? Okay. So you want to narrow that down by finding the last known source of power to that light. That's what our battery or that's what our light tester does for us. It helps us to find the last known power to to that particular wire that controls that particular light which has given us all the fits all right um so <laughs> let's get to doing that all right the first thing i'm going to do is hook up my light tester to a known ground in this case i just use my tire chains and then i'm going to pull that green electrical cord off of that trailer just like that all right the next thing i'm going to do is take my light tester and i'm going to start probing the wires that control the lights that i know are working i'm going to probe the running lights the clearing light, the clearance lights uh brake lights there's my left turn signal right there and there's my right turn signal right there. You see it's not flashing. There's a problem. Okay. When I probed that circuit that controls my right turn signal at the end of that plug and my light tester did not light up, that tells me that I was not getting power to that circuit at the end of that plug. Therefore, I have identified a problem somewhere between the end of that plug and the truck. So now I want to see if I'm getting power to the seven-way port on the truck. So I'm going to remove the electrical cord without sc scraping up my hand with no glove. And I'm going to test those circuits specifically. I, I, I'm looking to test that right turn signal circuit. But I'm going to test a few others just to make sure I still got good ground. I'm going to do the clearance lights, the running lights, the brake light. That's the brake light. There's the left turn signal. Here's the right turn signal. And you can see that light is not flashing. There's the brake light again. Left turn signal, just for OCD purposes. Right turn signal, no power. So I had no power at the seven-way port that comes out of the truck where, I, where the seven-way electrical cord plugs into the truck. That's the one that you never unplug. But... I had no power going into that cord. Of course I'm not going to have power all the way to the back of the trailer. The power to that wire that runs my right turn signal, it's not even leaving the truck. That tells me that I have isolated the problem or a problem to something up with the truck. Something's, something's going on with the wiring in the truck. The very next thing I'm going to do is pop that hood and I'm going to get into that fuse box. Let's do that right now. Okay, so I'm just going to take my light tester. I'm going to attach my little roach clip onto a known ground point. Generally, that's a bare metal screw or uh, tire chains, whatever's clever. Uh, just throw it onto something that you know is ground. And just start probing every one of those fuses. 
here I have to adjust that ground clamp right there because I didn't have good ground. So I'm just going to start probing every one of these fuses because I'm not going to look at the inside of that fuse panel and try to decipher the labels of all these fuses, especially on Peterbilt's. Peterbilt does a horrible job of labeling their fuses. So I'm just going to test the top and the bottom of every one of those fuses. And as soon as I find one that lights up on the top but doesn't light up on the bottom, I know that's a bad fuse. It's a blown fuse. It's essentially a broken wire. If your fuse doesn't light up on top and bottom, it it only lights up on, on one end, then it's essentially a broken wire. And look at there. I, I just found one. Well, if you've got a blown fuse, then you need to pull that fuse out and replace it. And look at what I've got here. I've got a box of 30 amp fuses that fit that truck. And you can see I get mine at Napa. Uh, you can get them from pretty much any truck stop, any auto parts store. Uh, these that I am carrying right now are 30 amps from Napa. Listen, I'll put a 30 amp fuse into a 5 amp uh, fuse circuit. And then I'll just tell my mechanic about it when I get back to the yard. I don't care. I'm running 30s on everything if they blow. Uh, so that's it. Replace that fuse and see what you got. Okay. While you're in the fuse box, you might as well check all the rest of your fuses too. It could be that you've got another blown fuse in there that may or may not be part of the problem. But go ahead and test all those fuses. And if you find another one that's blown, then just replace it. That's all. No big deal. Okay. Now, when you find a blown fuse and you replace it and your lights work again, it's really easy to say... Okay, I had a blown fuse and my tail lights weren't working. You know, that was the problem. The trouble with that philosophy is that we tend to stop right there. We replace that bad fuse and we get our lights back. Everything's great. We go tugging down the road again. The problem is that something caused that fuse to blow in the first place. It's a short in a wire. Uh, most of the time, it's bare wire that's rubbed against part of your frame or whatever the case it is. There's a bare wire showing somewhere. That's where the sticker is right there uh, because we have to track that down. So don't just satisfy yourself with replacing the fuse and getting your lights back because that fuse is going to blow again if you don't track down that bare wire short and address that problem as well and a lot of times you'll replace a fuse and immediately that brand new fuse will blow and if that's the problem you know you've got a really bad short you have to find that short you have to find what in most cases is a bare wire so let me show you what i found on this trailer because i knew i had a bad fuse i actually had two bad fuses but I knew something caused that fuse to blow, and I need to track down that bare wire. Let me show you what I found. Okay, look at this catastrophe right here. This is the short that I found. There are so many problems inside this image right here. This is at the very front of the trailer where the wiring comes out of the seven-way port and goes down into the trailer uh, just above the skid plate just above your kingpin plate the apron so right away i can see there's all kinds of nasty wiring right there you can see that red wire it's kind of rubbing through uh the green wire is rubbing through that brown wire is completely uh disconnected um you can see the hole where the wire comes out of the trailer wall there. There should be a rubber grommet or a piece of air hose or something around that hole 
to protect the wiring from that uh, metal hole. And also the apron, if you look at the, the rusty metal there, you can see that it has been bent up. That's a, about a quarter inch piece of steel right there. It's been bent up. And that is the problem right there where it makes that V bend. That wiring has been just sitting there vibrating for, you know, a hundred thousand miles or whatever, a million miles. And it's wore right through that wiring. It's really messed it up. So a lot of problems in that image right there. And I'm going to need to address that. Okay. So obviously that bad wiring where it's been chewed up on that bent steel down at the bottom, that's been the problem. And that is what is causing that fuse to blow out and knock out my right turn signal. So the best I could do in this situation was just wrap that wiring up with some electrical tape. Uh, I had that yellow tape right there. I wrapped it up to protect it against that steel. And uh, I shoved that grommet down there to kind of create a buffer, a protection against that, that uh, bent up metal right there. Write that sucker up. Tell your mechanic about it. Let them address it when you get back to the yard. But that's how I fixed it right there. Okay, by all rights, I shouldn't have tail lights on either trailer. Because that brown wire, you can see, is completely disconnected. It's completely broken. It actually looks like somebody has clipped it um, for whatever reason. They've probably clipped it because they were going to hook it up another way toward the back of the trailer. But if you look at your little uh, wiring diagram right there that tells you what wire controls which lights, you can see that the brown wire controls your tail lights and your ground lights, your um, running lights. I shouldn't say ground lights because that could be a confusing term. But that controls your running lights and tail lights. By all rights, I shouldn't have tail lights on this trailer. But I do. I've got tail lights on both trailers. So that tells me right there that those tail lights are wired somewhere in the back. They're piggybacked onto the clearance lights somewhere along those trailers, uh, along that first trailer. Uh, is that a problem? No, it's not a problem because the tail lights, the running lights, they come on when I turn the headlights on, just like the clearance lights. So it just tells me that that brown wire is somewhere piggybacked onto that uh, clearance light. And if you get into that wiring on the trailer, I guarantee you're going to find somewhere where that brown wire is spliced into the black wire uh, that runs your clearance lights. Is it a big deal? No. Uh, should it be fixed? Eh, maybe. If you got the time to do it, or the mechanics have the time to do it, whatever, they can address that. But it's not that big of a deal. It's just a little bit of insight into what's going on there and why that brown wire is like that. But I still have tail lights. Okay, so at this point in my repair, I had pretty much identified and solved both problems. I found the fuse, replaced it, and I tracked down the bare wire short that caused the fuse to blow, wrapped it up, and I was ready to go. I had lights, everything was working, I was ready to go. I had done as much as I could do. Um, but it's not always that simple. Sometimes you're going to have a problem inside your green electrical cord. Now, you've got two options. You can either track that down and fix it. It's super easy to do that. Or you can just run into the truck stop, spend $150 on a new cord, and <laughs> replace that. That's expensive, though. And a lot of you guys aren't carrying company credit cards, so it may not be that easy to just go drop $150 on a brand new electrical cord, if that's your problem. If you guys are doing a lot of drop and hook like I do, that green electrical cord where it plugs into the trailer, that's going to take a lot of movement. It's, it, you know, you're constantly pulling it out, you're constantly shoving it into another trailer, and 
it could be that the wiring inside that plug gets a little bit loose or, or even broken. You might need to repair that. So in this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to take that plug apart and repair those connections. Uh, this is pretty much for you guys who are actually interested in repairing your own plug instead of, you know, buying another one or calling a service guy out at $130 an hour or any other kind of ridiculousness. It takes you 10 minutes to dissect that plug and repair the problem inside of it. Here's how you do it. Okay, in this example, you've tested the end of your seven-way electrical cord that plugs into the trailer and you're not getting power at that end of the cord. So, you pull the other end of the cord out of your seven-way port at the truck's catwalk. You test it and everything is good to go. You're getting power to that wire. So, your problem is somewhere in that seven-way electrical cord that stretches between the truck and the front of the trailer. You need to, dis to dissect that electrical cord. Here we go. All right, the very first thing you're gonna do is take that very small Phillips head screwdriver and remove this screw. Put that screw in your pocket so you don't lose it. The next, you're gonna take this screw out. When you take that screw out, tap out a very small, uh, kind of a U-shaped thing and put all that in your pocket, two screws and that other little piece. That's going to allow you to expose where the wiring connects at the inside or the back side of that plastic plug. Those wires are just stripped back. You strip the plastic coating off of them. You poke each uh, wire into its appropriate slot and you screw that screw down, tighten up those wires in there. And look at this, you can't mess this up. These parts are labeled. It tells you exactly what color wire goes into which port. You can see that arrow right there on the left side pointing directly at that hole and that tells you that's your um, that's your brown wire, okay? And they're, all of them are labeled. You can't mess this up. Once you check to make sure all of those wires are securely in, into each one of their own little ports, you know, you just give them a little tug and if they're loose, you tighten them down. If they're broken, you fix it. So there you go. Put it all back together and your electrical problem should be finished, man. You can't, you can't mess this up. It's super easy. All right, guys, that's really it. This video is over 20 minutes long and I promise, I swear to you, it did not take me even 15 minutes to track down both of those problems and find that blown fuse identify that hard short and address both of those problems and get back out on the road. If that had been a tail light issue, it would have been the same thing. It would have been the same thing. It, just as easy as it was to find that problem and correct it as it was for me to uh, fix my right turn signal on my four-way flashers. There is no reason at all why any of us should be trucking down the road in the middle of the night doing a 10-hour shift with our flashers on, our four-way flashers on, because we don't have taillights. That's ridiculous. Guys, that is rookie stuff. That is, that's little league level right there. Lights, automotive electrical stuff, I'm telling you, that is the bane of my existence. I hate it. I hate it. But it is really super simple to fix this stuff. To me, that's one of those that's one of those slow pitches that you just got to hit, man. You got to hit the slow pitch. So, I cannot stress to you enough the importance of your inspections. You are solely responsible for this equipment. When you're running it out on the road, you are responsible for that. At the end of your shift, you've got to check out your equipment. Get up underneath there, turn your lights on, listen for air, look at all your lights. At the end of your shift, it takes you 15 minutes to find out that you just did a whole freaking shift without taillights on or whatever, or, you know, you just made 70 turns without a turn signal on it. You had no idea. At the end of your shift, check all that stuff out. Address it. It takes you 10, 15 minutes to do it, and then you're ready to go the next time. 
Really, really easy stuff. I hope this helped. I know I can be long-winded and I'm not the greatest teacher. Uh, and I'm horrible at video editing. So if you've made it this long, I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you guys sticking around for a long-winded video. And uh, if you learned anything, hey, pass this stuff on, man. Have a blast, guys.